Today we're installing the industrial Teltonica RUTX50 and antenna in the van with a view of later on fixing Starlink to it so we've got full fail over. Getting Wi-Fi on the move is a contentious issue so there are a million different ways to do it um, and we have tried quite a few of them. So for many years we have used this, our trusty 5G mobile Wi-Fi. So it's paired with a MIMO aerial on the roof and for the main it does give good signal however it does have its shortcomings so the one that we have only has one sim in it so we can support one network unless we've got a multi-sim network and they can work out quite dear it doesn't amplify other wi-fi available in the area which is a bit of a missing feature that we could have and it doesn't have failover so we can't use multiple sims we can't fail over to something else that might be available to us this is important to us because we need a stable connection when we're on the road so we're power users of the internet it's fair to say we use it for our work we use it to keep ourselves entertained um, and we like to be able to be connected when we're in remote areas um, should an emergency arise so it's not just from a practical um, or day-to-day -day standpoint sometimes it's from a safety issue basically build a system today that will give us that in the event that we need it. So how are we gonna do that? So we have gone for one of these. So this is the Tau Tonica RUTX 50. This box of gizmos here comes in, if you search and hunt for it, at around 360 pounds. So this bad boy has a number of upgrades to the system that we already have. So first and foremost, you can put two SIMs in this thing uh, which is great because you can run multiple networks. The next clever piece of wizardry in this is that not only does it have two, but it can switch between the two. Um, or you can use both if you really wanted to, to create a more stable connection. So that's a bonus for us. The other bonus is that you can insert more aerials into this. So we're going to pair this with a Taltonica aerial on the roof. That's going to give us four mobile signals and a GPS signal as well. So we know where the van is at all times through this box of gizmos. Just like the one we're going to be taking out, this can be powered over 12 volt, which is great. Very efficient for in a van or a, a tiny home where you're running a DC system. And it has a WAN port, which means that with some other box of tricks, we can run our new Starlink Mini in cahoots with it. It's important to us that we get the most value out of this and actually we're going to be using our 5g system to power most of our stuff most of the time anyway the video integrating the starlink is going to come in a later video so please subscribe if you want to catch that at a later date before we begin so i'm going to do all of the tests here at base so we're just going to run the ee test from the 5g because wouldn't it be funny if we get to the end of the video and find that actually we've made no improvements at all so let's have a look at what we're pulling down here so i'm using an app called uh Ookla, available the world over to run my speed test um we'll run it three times take the average and then see why we're at the end of the video on average we've got 15.7 megabits down and about three megabits up so what's first in the install but the first thing that i'm going to need to do is just take this down okay so we'll remove this guy um try and pass it onto a new home because like I said it's really good like especially in France I, it was amazing it's just in the UK and I suppose it's a good thing in a way um, it seems to be that the signal just isn't as good here and we want to boost it as much as possible and make the most use of the networks that we have um, whether it's because it just roams when we're in France and that's included in our plan I don't know but obviously it doesn't do that over here you're stuck with one network Anyway, let's get this removed, get up on the roof, take the other antenna down and try and get the new one run. In fairness, I probably shouldn't be going up and down the ladder because I've very recently torn something in my knee and I'm waiting for a scan. So I don't want to make that any worse because my wife will kill me. Um, so I'm just have to be very careful and probably not carry a camera up a ladder. But yeah, let's get this thing undone. 
and then we can see how it compares to the new one because the new antenna looks massive I don't know if it's going to fit the uh, mount that I made for this one before probably not because why would anything be fun if it wasn't that easy <laughs> removed the old antenna and that's come down fine um, first thing to point out is that my roof is well used feel free to comment on that but you know whatever what I did was installed the new antenna on the existing base that I'd had there previously taking time to put all of the cables in some protective sheathing then what I've used is one of these scan strut grommets to put the cables through the roof um, with this they say you only need a little blob of sealant on the screws I always like to go around it um, I'm not too fussed if it looks a little bit untidy on my roof I'd rather it didn't leak through it so that's all up there now but let's hop back inside to see what I've jerry rigged up here so I've got it plugged in now um, obviously this is not its final resting position and I've got it linked up to a DeWalt battery down here which is fine it's got quite a range of DC power that it can go through DeWalt is obviously an 18 volt so that's fine got it hooked up just with the EE sim in that we had earlier so I'm just going to pop it down my phone down where it was I've obviously added up I've also added on all of the other devices that were on the network before um, and they're all working just to see how it's going to work obviously this isn't the final resting position but let's see if I'm going to be disappointed in how we run okay so we're going to set off Ookla oh my giddy ant so the speed earlier was around 15.7 megabytes download on average through this thing 151 so about 10 times faster just by changing that and the aerial on the roof um we haven't got it hooked up to a second sim this is through the same sim as before pretty pleased with that we're getting 3.32 up earlier now it's around 13.5 so about 4.5 times faster through this thing now this is pretty cool obviously i want to get it seated in its final resting position so before I do that, I'm going to go and make a mount. So I jumped into Fusion 360. So I've been getting into my 3D modeling and produced, first of all, this cage. So this actually will mount up here and encapsulates the router itself. It slides in nice and snug and then has a faceplate that goes on the front. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, keep it all nice and sturdy but i wanted to make sure that i could switch it off and have a little bit of force cooling uh, behind it as well so what i've also done is created this riser that goes on the back of here that has a cut out for a fan it has a switch for the iutx 50 and it has a switch to power this fan as well um, the fan itself is actually going to run off the back USB port of the IUTX50. I thought make use of it, why not? Um, and up in the cupboard, what I've done is I've marked up where I want a hole to pass through. I've drilled out a 38mm hole. It's going to pass through here um, for a little bit of forced ventilation. And I'll just make a little cover up on the 3D printer as well. Better print that white though, because this looks a little bit violent to just push in and make the end of this hole a little bit neater. So the Wi-Fi antennas that come with it that sit inside the vehicle are magnetic. So you can stick them on things around the van that is metal. But I wanted somewhere to store them because uh, for the most part, I think it'll be fine where they are. I'm going to put them on the other side of the cupboard. So I've made a little mount here as well that have got magnets in them. So I can stick that up. Um, have the cables up out of the way and move them around the vehicle if I want so put them at the end and at the end here um, if need be but I don't think I'll need to but I wanted a nice little place to store them so I made that too so hooking up the RUTX 50 is pretty straightforward so the antenna that I've gone for on the roof has got four mobile um, wires that plug into the four mobile wires like that, they just scroll on there. I think they're called SME connectors, I think, something like that. 
Um, they're pretty sturdy, they won't go anywhere or rattle loose, which is good for in a vehicle. Then you've got one in the middle here that is for your GPS. And again, the antenna that I've gone for has a GPS, so I can locate the vehicle um, or even use like a dedicated tracking app if I want to. And then the other two on here are for your Wi-Fi. So if you want to broadcast outside the vehicle um, or connect to other Wi-Fi sources, you use these two, but actually I'm not going to. So I'm going to use the internal antennas because I want to broadcast inside the vehicle. It is oppressively hot today. I've had the air con on, which has been a godsend, but I'll just turn it off for a uh, a little bit of filming. So we have it installed now. So on the riser and the mount is in. What I've also done is installed the little vent on the back and a grommet to allow me to move the Wi-Fi antennas, which I don't know if I'll need to do. I've just given it a try uh, now, like moving it about. And it does seem to improve the signal if you move them up and down the van. Um, although we're literally inside a Faraday cage. so. I think in terms of uh, the signal being contained within the van, it should be fine. So wiring up it is pretty simple. Um, I have taken a feed from my 12 volt fuse box and I've decided to step it up to 24 volt so I can run a 1.5 mil cable up to where I've got the unit. Um, if you had a suitable gauge cable already in situ or you wanted to reinstall a, a cable, you wouldn't need to do that. But seeing as the unit can take up to 50 volts, I thought, why not um, put less stress on the cable that's there, stepping that up. So from there, it comes up to the switch in the bottom and then I can switch it off and on at will. And then the fan that's on the back is running from the USB on the top. And again, that switch on its own which I'm quite grateful for because I don't know if you can hear it, but it is quite loud. The Eagle Eye on you will also note that I had to move my cupboard today because it was fouling on here. I want to be able to show it so it shuts the noise down and we've still got the airflow coming out. Okay, so now it's installed, I've got two SIMs running in it now. I've got the EE SIM and then in Prime Day, I managed to pick up a three SIM, um, an 18 month deal for like 27 pounds in total 80 gig a month and then the EE I've got unlimited for two years again I picked that up on a prime day so the way that will work in here now the way that I've got it set up is that if one signal is weaker than the other it will switch over um, failover they call it to the other one you can also have it run so the bandwidth is sort of shared so you get the best of both worlds um, I think I'll tinker around with that and see how that goes. But for the most part, I've always been happy with the EE when you can get it. And then when it's not, it's going to switch over. Obviously, the ultimate aim is going to be to have that also be able to switch over to the Starlink. But for now, I think I've proven that, that this was a worthy upgrade from what I had. Like two SIMs and the signal just seems to be like exponentially better. So the Teltonica X50 that I've gone for is a couple of years old now, so the price is coming down. I appreciate that at 350 plus the 85 that I've paid for on the roof is a lot of money. But when you consider that more expensive motorhome Wi-Fi that come with other Teltonica routers are much dearer, like seven, eight hundred pounds, I think this is worth doing. You can just build the kit yourself like I have, get the router, get your aerial. Obviously you don't need this if you don't want to, but I've decided to add it in there for a little extra peace of mind. Um, and away you go, you've saved yourself sort of a few hundred quid. I'm really happy that I've got this one installed now. The next stage for this, like I say, is to road test it, see how it works and install the Starlink with it as well. So we've got that failover capability. That's all installed now. Starlink incoming. Any questions on this, please let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.